Good evening. Today I will be presenting my research on the efficacy of disinfectants on four bacteria. A little bit about myself. My name is Alicia Thompson. I'm currently a senior at Galileo Magnet High School. I plan to attend Howard University while I'm studying in an architectural program. I chose this topic because from a young age, I've always gotten sick extremely easily due to my low immune system. As someone who has struggled with this and currently has a pet that resides on the floor, I wanted to learn more about susceptibility risk. I wanted to learn how to lower these risks by disinfecting floors and surfaces. As for the real world importance, finding effective disinfectants for floors and surfaces can help prevent many diseases and keep environments as sterile as possible. Well, pathogens come in various structures, so they can result in various effects on both humans and animals. As for humans, they can result in symptoms such as infections and irritation in eyes and nose and dry coughs. As for animals, they can experience infections as well. There are multitudes of pathogen types, both toxic and non-toxic, and they can reside in any environment, as airborne bacteria or surface bacteria. The transmission of these pathogens are also varied, can also vary as they can transfer from environment to environment or places as small as from room to room with things such as direct contact or from shoe sole from walking. Any movement for that matter can transfer pathogens as they can easily be picked up by resulting dust or waves and be carried elsewhere. This is where disinfectants come into place. Disinfectants are very important when it comes to infection control which helps increase the sterility of environments. Because of this importance, disinfectants for specific surfaces and their bacteria are in very high demand. There are various types of disinfectants, just like pathogens, and their use should depend on the surface type you're cleaning and the bacteria on that surface. The practicality of disinfectants is also very important. They, require, they need to be able to meet certain requirements in order to be classified as practical or efficient. The disinfectant must be able to reach the target site of the bacterial cell, which as a result will end up killing the bacteria. However, while the disinfectant must be able to kill the bacteria, it must be both non-toxic and non-lethal to humans, animals, environments, and objects such as clothing and surfaces. During the disinfection process, there are efficiency variables that need to be considered such as the contact period of your disinfectant, the pH of your disinfectant, and the concentration of your disinfectant. The concentration or dilution of a disinfectant should be very specific, because if not, it could cause potential harm or danger to the person using it or the surrounding environment. Most often, the, the disinfectant should be diluted to the dilution given by the manufacturers of the product. Organic excess is another variable that needs to be considered before adding a disinfectant, as any surface material can cause the effectiveness to lower. One of the last things that needs to be considered is biocide susceptibility. Because pathogens come in various forms, their susceptibility to disinfectants can also vary greatly. Therefore, before determining a disinfectant to be used on a surface, you should determine the specific bacteria that might be on that surface and the bacteria's classifications in order to find it the most efficient. As for the justification of this study, efficient disinfectants for floors and surfaces have yet to be identified. The study provides additional information in the field about a specific surface and its bacteria. As without some of this information, sterilization cannot be as, as effective as possible. The research question for my experiment is the following. Which disinfectants are most effective at decreasing bacteria on floors or surfaces? My normal hypothesis for this question is, if the floor is clean with webicide, then there will be no difference in the bacteria count. My research hypothesis is, if the floor is clean with webicide, then the bacterial count will be lowered. These hypotheses were formed based off of previous research found in my literature review, showing that webicide has proved to be an efficient disinfectant on other surface materials in the past. The variables of my experiment include my chosen disinfectants as the independent, the bacterial count as the dependent, no added disinfectants as the control, and the surface type, in this case tile, as the constant, along with other details such as the time for incubation and the temperature for incubation. 
I will get my methodology by gathering my materials. I made it to being my chosen disinfectants, wavicide and fetal rare. I decided to gather a sample size of 30 from a population of all bacteria. I then began labeling my agar petri dishes in my floor sections and began swabbing for my controlled variable, the bacterial count without added disinfectants. I put those samples into their designated dishes once the control was collected and I applied my first round of disinfectant, the wave aside, to the first 15 tile samples. I then swabbed the floors after the disinfectant was applied with the cloth and put those samples into their designated dishes. I incubated the control samples and the 15 wave side samples for 48 hours. The next day, I began the second wave of my disinfection, the phenol ray to the last 15 tile samples. I then swapped the floor after disinfecting with the phenol ray and put those samples into their designated dishes. I incubated them for 48 hours as well. Once the 48 hours for all 30 control samples and the 30 disinfectant samples were completed, I counted my bacterial colonies and the strategies used to destroy any leftover bacteria afterwards. I completed my work by compiling my raw data and conducting statistical analysis. And the analysis of these results represented here on this graph showing the difference between the before and after bacterial count. It can be seen that the website had an ever so slightly greater difference. With the starting mean of both of these groups being equal, looking at the difference could suggest that the website lowered the initial bacterial count more than the phenol red, which is seen to have a mean difference less than 100. These results came via an unpaired t-test, and with a significance level of 0.05, there was not sufficient evidence to conclude that Wavicide is more efficient with a p-value of 0.27 on tiles floor. The results of my data proved consistent with those in my literature review. These results also concluded that disinfectants had insignificant difference in lower bacterial counts. To counteract this insignificance, these, these literature reviews showed that additional steps, scrubbing, would have been needed to be added to the disinfection process. The greatest limitations in my study were the lack of measurements and the application process. When I applied the website and phenol reds to the four sections, I simply poured it without adding a, without using a specific tool to give a measurement. So there's a possibility that some sections got more or less of a product than others. When I applied that disinfectant with the cloth, the website was done with a brand new cloth, while the phenol red was wiped with a used cloth. The used cloth for the phenol red group could have caused additional bacteria to be added to the section while being wiped, therefore skewing the data. Future research in this study would definitely still be needed. And if model research were to specifically be redone, exact measurements should be made and disinfectants should be added with brand new cloths to try to avoid as many limitations as possible. Additional variables could also be changed and other surface materials could be tested along with other disinfectants. As a whole, this research process has taught me a lot about how to plan and manage my time efficiently. I had to make sure to communicate with all teachers as I stayed behind in government schools while I had to complete this experiment. I also had to make sure I worked at a steady pace without losing focus in order to complete this work in the time allotted with those teachers. When it came to procrastination, I learned that things went a lot smoother when I got things done as early as possible. And if I ever came upon the problem, I had access to any and all teachers if necessary. With these skills, I feel I've become a little more prepared for any future work that may require this level of dedication. I would like to give a great thanks to Ms. Long for leading me through these past two years of research, and Mrs. Spence for helping me with the bacteria and disinfectants used in this experiment. All right, at this time, I'll be taking any questions. Mr. Harris? Uh, based off your pictures, I think that's the lab upstairs, but if you were to collect your samples in a place that's not the lab, do you think your results would have been different? Mr. Hare asked if my results could have been different if I did not use the lab here at the Piedmont Government School. Um, I believe that the results would have been different. Um, the lab upstairs is used by multiple students and things such as the chemicals and stuff used in experiments have been all over the floors. So yes, I do believe the results could have been different. Ms. Craig? Yeah, if you had to do this again, would you 
measure out the amount of disinfectant that you use? Ms. Craig asked if I did the experiment again with measurements to be made for disinfectants. Um, yes, I would definitely use measurements in order to get any, a proper amount for each section to make sure more or less it's used. Um, yes. Walls. Walls. <laughs> um, so uh, I was curious why on your data chart you didn't have the control group. Uh, did you count how many bacteria were in the floor without any treatment before you got started with the treatment? Ms. Walls asked if I counted bacteria without any treatments. Um, yes, I did, but in my research, I focused on the difference between the two disinfectants instead of the before the disinfectants were added. So on, um, on your error plates, it looks like a lot of those are you know, really tightly clustered. Do you have any difficulty with your count? And if so, how do you mitigate that? Um, Mr. Talico asked if I had any difficulty with my count and how I went about that. Um, I counted as many colonies, individual colonies as possible. And when I came across those colonies that were too large or closely together, I just simply measured them with a ruler. Did you use the same methodology when you were swapping the floor? Like, did you count and you go straight back or? Um, Mrs. Collins asked if I used the same methodology when swapping the floors. Um, for each of the sections, I tried to swap the entire square mm -hmm. and I tried to swap them for around 15 to 20 seconds. 